Hello everyone and welcome to some Battle for Mirrors 2. Today I'm doing something a bit different rather than like online battles. Today um, I'm actually like doing finally a uh, how-to video. Um, basically I've been getting a lot of quests and actually like to make some how-to videos and today I, I took the opportunity to make some uh, how to play men slash Gondor. So basically what you start what you want to start off with is I mean, build one farm over here or like anywhere around your fortress. The next thing is you want to build a, a barracks that's like close to the enemy lines. So either here um, or here or this side. It works well with this like map layout, uh, Forge of Eisen, because you can actually like flank from uh, three different sides. Um, you can actually get a little bit more courageous if you're feeling like comfortable with your strategy You can actually build over this area. So it's like really close to the enemy fortress, which is right here um, This strategy is like quite effective um, in the early game concerning how strong Gondor soldiers are and I will show you like clips of online battles I've had with Gondor uh, They're like extremely effective extremely strong. They destroy resource buildings like really quickly now, depending on the factions, it works well um, against um, Mordor, uh, goblins, um, even men, if you're actually, like, pretty good. Uh, I'm not really focusing too much on the gameplay, but basically what I want to start off with is, like, one barracks over here, a couple of farms, two probably, and then you'll actually be able to get one unit out, and then get more, more units like two or three more and then you can actually like start building another barracks uh, over this side of the map or that side of the map and then you can actually like spread out your units basically it's like you want to control like his side of the map like the enemy side of the map so you can actually like get really good early game that's uh, the go-to strategy here is like to gain as much control and like stop the resource uh, production of the enemy anyway so basically what you want to do is like spread out your units as much as you can and like try to gain um, some like micro control advantage over your uh, enemy so this is what you want to do just basically keep your units pumping out and then like try to destroy your resource buildings um, with this strategy you'll be uh, giving away your um, creeping with the uh, with the wargs and all that crap but I think it's worth it because you get really good um, like uh, control of the early game like you, you get s like a much better advantage on like controlling the pace of the game with your uh, early game harassment and this allows you to actually like you know um, progress through the map I, I know I'm, I'm not really uh, playing against uh, what do you call it um, online players because you know there's a chance that I might not actually be able to get um, you know Gondor when playing online so yeah in any case, so so far so good. Basically, I'm just like trying to control the map here. Just get over there. See, I got units over there too. That'll allow me to actually destroy some of his buildings, resource buildings. So so far so really great actually. I mean, it's a really good strategy I think because it just allows you to control the map and look at how we have enough resources to actually get a hero now. Boromir, he's like super good like with this strategy because he can just stun enemies if he has like uh, more archers and whatnot. Oh, there we go, he's got actually attacking with those, he's got attacking with that, there we go. See, we've destroyed like so many buildings of his, it's, oh, we're getting attacked over here, this side. It's no big deal, he can, I mean, I'm destroying most of his buildings as well, so it's not really that much of a deal, I'm just um, losing one barracks, which is... Alright, I mean, I've got another barracks here, big deal. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically this is what you want to do, just, um, like, gain control of the map, and look, he's got no buildings, he's, lo he's lost one builder, and he's, I mean, the enemy's just pretty much screwed. I mean, I know I'm playing as Brutal, but this really works against players as well, like online players, I assure you, 100%. I will even show you like um, footage um, of me uh, like playing in online as well. And there you go. You have we have a hero. Uh, I mean a hero now, and we have t ten power points. You can actually get Bombadil. 
This is going really well. He only has two barracks. And look, he's trying to build more and just destroy it. He's out of money now. Oh my god, you're actually losing that one. But it's fine. We can just build here. And yeah. We got that down. Uh, so yeah, pretty much. Um, so after you get Boromir at this point, like you have really good advantage over the enemy. And at this point, now it's actually a good time to get like cavalry or like archers and whatnot. And we're just killing his builders. That's nice. We can actually attack this one. Just use Rallying Call. Just le let, letting uh, Boromir level up actually. Because he, he can get uh, Horn of Gondor. So yeah, this is this is like... Like super effective, super efficient strategy. I mean, this by no means is like how you must play it, but this is really good if you actually just like struggling and don't know how to play um, men. This is like really a go-to strategy. I mean, uh, most uh, pro people like play this strategy. Like for example, Biff me to Yoda and some other really good players in the uh, Biff me to community. We got level five. You know, wow, that's insane. Alright, let's get over here, destroy that building. Now he has no buildings whatsoever, no builders. So, the game is pretty much GG right now. We can get stables. Two units, and I think with this, like, amount of force, we can actually destroy his fortress. And, um, if he actually, like, happens to get uh, cavalry, you can just pretty much get tower guards to about 400 gold each, and right now you have like gold advantage, uh, command point advantage, uh, so this works really, really great. Uh, there we go. You have like a lot of units, and now it's just a matter of time. Let's get some targets. Oh, we're out of command points. Yeah, you just gotta keep building, uh, like, don't forget to keep building more resource, re resource unit, uh, buildings. To increase your um, economical advantage, and yeah, that's pretty much the entire strategy. To be honest, I have like so much gold; it's not even a joke. You can, I mean, if this game like prolongs, you can't really end it quickly as I'm doing right now. Um, you can save up for either Aragorn or just like pump out more units, more um, more cavalry, and all that crap. But yeah, I think with this amount of force, we can actually end the game. And yeah, we'll just like circle around the fortress. And that should do it. Put a uh, rallying call. There we go. The fortress should go down soon. And yeah, after this, I'm gonna show you some footage of uh, the game, of like different online games I've had using this strategy and working pretty well. Even like BFME2 Yoda using this strategy against me. And like destroying me in like under eight minutes, so yeah. And after after I show you the clips, I'm gonna show you a uh, another strategy, which is to counter elves or someone who's using this strategy against you. And uh, yeah, I'll be showing you the other strategy shortly after I show you the clips. There you go. Right. So as I said earlier one farm and one barracks right close to the enemy lines but don't place the uh, barracks like in a place that is uh, obvious for the enemy just put it like somewhere where it's like somewhat hidden so he won't really expect it too much and once the barracks is built you actually have enough gold for either units if you want to train units right away or uh, if you want to do like me which is pretty much build another barracks on a different side of the map just because I like um, being able to train units from both uh, different sides of the map to harass my enemy, basically. And uh, skipping through ahead, you can actually see that I'm running into works, but that's not the point here. Uh, imagine the works are not there, but yeah, as you, as you can see, I'm distracting his units with one u one battalion, and I'm like sending more units uh, across his uh, base, basically, like around his base, just to like destroy his resource buildings because they're unprotected they ha he has like units just like clumped up in one place pretty much so his resource buildings are gonna go down because Gondor's soldiers like 
uh, point number one, they're stronger than uh, golden orcs. Point number two, they do a shit ton of damage to research buildings, as you can see here. Even, even like when they're in mid battle, they can actually take down a farm. So that's pretty great. And as you can see, I had enough money to get Boromir, which is awesome. So that's like a huge advantage over him. He has no heroes, and um, yeah, I'm destroying his resource buildings. Pretty awesome. He's still distracted. Um, doing a better micro control uh, than what my enemy is doing, which is uh, something really good. As you can see, I destroyed like two battalions of orcs with just one unit of my Gondor soldiers. And as you can see here now, he has a troll. It's a uh, big of an it's an issue, but not really that much of an issue because I can just like train tower guards as, as you will see right here. Foreign gold, che even like cheaper than uh, the trolls. I think they cost about six hundred gold. I think. He's got more trolls, but I'll get like more tower guards, so it's not really a big deal. I destroyed like uh, three resource buildings right now, and he suffered nine hundred gold from it. Boromir has arrived. I have a hero, and he doesn't, so that's awesome. And now, as you can see, I've got 10 power points skipping through ahead again, because I don't want to show you the full footage of the game. So I've got Boromir, I've got a couple of tower guards, and uh, Bombadil. He doesn't stand a chance at winning this fight, to be honest. Um, Horn of Gondor, one thing that the troll actually, the trolls actually can knock back Boromir, so he might not be able to cast it, but it doesn't really matter. With tower guards, they can just like melt through the trolls. Not much of a big deal. I went for an archery range just because he hasn't got any spider layers, spider pits, so he doesn't have any cover yet. So yeah, uh, the trolls, I mean, I can just protect my archers with uh, tower guards, so not really too scary. I went with um, cover as a, after that, just because the fact that he hasn't got any uh, troll pikes, so yeah, he doesn't have a chance of stopping my cavalry as well. As and right now, it should really look like GG to be honest, because I'm really controlling him. He just can't get away from his 50 meter base. And yeah, I mean this strategy really works with 1.06, 1.00, 1.09, any versions of the uh, of the BFME2. So yeah, and now I have enough gold for Aragorn. It's GG to be honest. When no matter what he does, he just like can't really defend his base because the power of micro micro control. You can just spread out your Gondor soldiers and they just destroy resource buildings. So he's pretty much like has to play defensively the entire game to be honest. What he should have done is probably going for uh, cavalry. Spider riders they do a lot of damage. And they do a lot of damage to structures as well as to units. So, yeah, pretty much. So yeah, there, you, there you go. That's a victory right there. Uh, now this is a clip of me playing against BFME2 Yoda. In my opinion, he is actually one of the best BFME2 players, and he's actually using this strategy as well. So as you can see here, he's actually gonna destroy my furnace in about two seconds, really. <laughs> and he's already like spreading out his units onto my base. As you can see, he's distracting one unit that I have and destroying more furnaces. It's just ridiculous. Like, this strategy is so powerful, so strong. And if you actually, like, struggle with this strategy at first, just keep practicing with your micro control. And hopefully, as more as you play, the better you get. Um, so, yeah, I hope, like, this strategy works out for you. And I'll show you the next strategy in a bit. Alright, so for the second strategy for men, um, which is, like, quite viable, is uh, against factions that are spammable, like they uh, spam a lot of units, a lot of uh, swordmen, uh, or a lot of archers, is basically you want to get one stables and one farm, you want to you, you get like a uh, cavalry as soon as possible. Um, this is a good way of doing so, get one farm, get one stables, and as soon as the, uh, the stables finish uh, building, you'll have I think enough for one unit. Which is really good because you want to do as much damage to these resource buildings as you can. And if um, elven archers stand in your way, you can just trample over them. Now, one thing I'm doing, I'm, one thing to note is that I'm recording this uh, against AI, and AI knows if you're building a stables early game or a barracks. So chances are they're gonna get a lot of pikes for some reason. I don't know why. 
even though like um, so uh, elven swordmen are like much more stronger compared to Gondor soldiers. So yeah. In any case, uh, one Gondor knight costs uh, costs about 550 and. We have just right, the right amount for it, which is pretty good. We can actually get one unit and actually do some damage. But basically, if you destroy two resource buildings, you've made much more profit than your enemy. You you, you destroy 600, 600 gold of his income, and you reduce the um, the command points slash resource income for your enemy, which is really good. Gets you a lot of um, advantage early game. I mean, this is rather expensive start compared to Gondor soldiers, but you can. I mean, if you if you're having trouble against doing the Gondor soldier spam against like elves or spamable faction, this is like pretty viable. I'll show you also like footage of me playing online and doing it, doing this like exact strategy against uh, other people. But yeah, chances are he's actually gonna get pikes as soon as possible. I mean, these kind of strategies like you, kind of. Like, forget about getting wargs early game, but yeah. So far, I don't see any of his units or buildings. Oh, there you go, that's a building. Melon tree, let's get... Melon call, attack that please. He's got builder over there too. Uh, we want to keep uh, making resource buildings as well. See, he's got pikes for some reason, I don't know why. It's just, I think the AI knows that I'm building stables, so just like, they get it for some reason. Anyways, let's just keep doing what we're doing. We've got Let's one go. resource building, that's 300. Let's go. And we stopped the uh, the income for one melon tree, now on for the second one. Let's make a barracks. Right here. We're actually gonna get another one. Another melon tree, that's 600 gold. You've already made profit. Like, you're already in the lead. In terms of gold, you can actually get the other one. I don't. Th I don't want to uh, spend too much time on the builder because I know like a good player would actually get his builder away from it. So yeah, and I actually get another unit. How are we doing over there? Yeah, basically just three resource buildings, three launchers, and level two now, so they can actually regenerate health. This is crazy good, like super good strategy, super viable. Alright, there you go. Go over there, please. Attack that. See, they do a lot of damage. And you get a lot of power points as well. Now just go over there. Get units. He's got two bags, that's surprising. Well, anyways, like this is the strategy that you want to do. Uh, let me get more. We got more knights, that's pretty good, you can actually like, micro control. See, we even destroyed three useless buildings. That's 1200 gold. That is insane. Now we can do that. Do this. Ah. Avery. Doesn't even bother me, dude. Just trample over his units. We're gonna lose a little two units, sadly, but... It's for the greater good. Alright, there you go. Let's keep making more units. And yeah, that's that's how you do it, basically. I don't want to like prolong this video any longer, to be honest, because it's just pretty much like straightforward. So I'm just going to jump straight through the uh, online clips that I've had with other people. And yeah, let's just jump right into it. This is actually a game I played against uh, Mac Pollitt back in the day. And uh, we were on a call, so I think he actually told me that he's actually elves. So I went straight away for stables, and I think I got like elven wood just to make sure that he's not bluffing me, to be honest. Because, um, you know, we kind of do that often, often times. So here I see his elves skipping through, and I've just got my first unit of Gondor Knights. I'm gonna run straight into his base, destroy his resource buildings and whatnot, just to kind of cripple him in uh, money wise and gain some uh, resource advantage over my enemy now uh, this strategy is really good just because like m like the fact that many people do not expect uh, cavalry to game so you don't see that many pikes 
coming out of uh, most games in the first uh, couple of minutes. And uh, one thing to note is that you should keep your units behind melon trees or resource buildings, just because he, if he has archers, they can't. Yeah, they have to like go around the resource buildings to actually hit your units. So that's one thing to note. And yeah, I hope this kind of video actually like you know uh, has been very informative, for informative for you and like helped you out. In any way, so yeah, that's all. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.